So this is in general uh, question 32. So that kind of question where you have specific mean and standard deviation and you're trying to figure out um, the number of people who fit into a specific category. Um, so we have, let me get the homework over here. Range things so I could think, see them. So we have a mean of women of 62.3. We have a standard deviation of 3.9. All these are in inches. And then for the men, we have 69.2. Oh, I'm sorry, mean 69.2. And the standard deviation for the men is 3.3 .3 inches. Uh, so they have equipment <clears throat> at amusement park where you have to be between uh, 57 inches and 63 inches. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the number of people who meet these specific guidelines. <clears throat> so specifically, and let me change to this. What we're doing is, okay, share whiteboard. So we have like men right here, where we have 69-ish inches here. And we have this spread here as one standard deviation being 3.3 .3 inches. So what that means is that then 3.3 .3 inches of that 69.2, we have <coughs> a specific number of people who would fit in that. It's actually about 66%. And the easiest way to do this is look at the Z-score. Um, so a z-score is a way we could standardize p uh, values within a normal distribution. So it's a way we can look and see, are things equal? Are they exceptionally big or exceptionally small based on your mean? Um, and the z-score formula, let's see if I can still remember it. Z is equal to, oh, sorry, Z is equal to X minus mu, um, mu over your standard deviation. I'm pretty sure. And I will check to make sure. Z scores 112. This book goes all over the place and so does your homework. Yes, X minus X bar over your standard deviation. So what we're going to do here is we have a mean of 69.2 and a standard deviation 3.3 for men. Uh, we want to know how many people will fit between, uh, what is it, 57 and 63. So I'll draw two lines here. Uh, so 63 here. And... 57. <clears throat> so I would highly suggest if you're having trouble visualizing z-scores that you do something like this where you can actually draw out the mean of what you're looking at. So the men, you have the uh, mean of men and then you draw in the ranges that you're going to look for because it helps you to visualize what you're going to do. So what I'm going to do is these values right here. So 
So my X values are R. We're going to have two of them, 63 and 57. Those are the values I'm interested in for this. My mu, which is the mean, is 69.2. And my standard deviation, which is given, is 3.3. .3. So that's all the values I need in order to solve this problem. <clears throat> so what I have to do is find out, essentially, ooh, draw this right here, different color, this area right here. And what I could do is I could figure out this area and subtract this area. So if I can figure out how many is, is to the left of the first value, and then how many is left to the second value, I can subtract them to find out how much is in the middle. So we do this with a z-score and a table, which I will show you in a bit. So first of all, I have to find the z-score of this point right here of the 63 and the z-score of 57. So the z is equal to x, so my value there, 63, minus 69.2, and all that is over 3.3. .3. So this is for, I'm supposed to put in here, let me see, Z of uh, 63. Because I'm looking specifically at point 63. <coughs> Needs to be not that point. So this one, you subtract those two numbers. So six three minus sixty nine point two is negative six point two. And we have that over 3.3. Here, let's do the z equals. Which will give us a value of negative 1.87 repeating. So it's important when you look at this, <clears throat> your value here will always be negative for Z if it's this side and positive Z for this side. And if you're at the mean, you'll be at zero. So it's a very good way to remember, am I doing things right? Am I, did I mess up? Do I have a negative number? Is it on the left side? Do I have a positive number? Is it on the right side? So that is our first value. Uh, the second one we're gonna do, since it's to the left, it should be smaller. So in this case, more negative than the first. So the Z of 57 is equal to 57 minus 69.2, and all that's over 3.3. So 57 minus 69.2 is negative 12.2. So Z of 57 is negative 12.2 over 3.3, which would give us a Z score of negative 3.69. <clears throat> now, from here, there is something called a z-table. Let me get it from the back of the book. So right here, in the back of your book, or there's z-tables online, you can look up your probability of things based on your z-score. So you need to make sure that you have 
either a negative or positive t score. So are you looking to the right, to the left? Oh, it's all this. So all of these, by the way, will assume that you're moving to the left, that everything you want is to the left. So if I wanted to know how many were above 63, I would take the probability from this book, from the z-score, and I would look up that number and this one minus that number, which I'll go over in a bit. So luckily for you, there are websites that will do this. Table, like ztable.com. which is currently down, of course. But here's one from the University of Arizona. <clears throat> so our values were the first one. Oh, where did it go? Of course I stopped sharing, so it went away. negative 1.87 repeating. So what I had to do is I have the first two digits. So the, the ones place in the tenths place is right here. So I go to negative one right here, eight, and then I go over to seven, or I might do it eight because it uh, went over, which gives us 0 0.03005. So 0 0.03005, so let's go back to the whiteboard. So the Z of 63 is equal to 0 0.03005. And then we have to find the Z of 57. So that's negative 3.69 repeating. So new share. 3.6, and then we have nine repeating, or basically negative 3.7, because I'm rounding, would give you 0 0.00011. So <clears throat> the Z of 57 is, Zero 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 one one. So to find the difference between these two numbers right here, I have to subtract these probabilities. So zero point zero zero point zero three zero zero five minus zero point zero 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 one one, which gives us zero three zero zero five minus point zero 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 one one. Why did it do that? 0 0.03005 minus 0 0.00011 equals wrong. Come on. 0 0.03005 minus 0 0.00011. Point 0 0.02994. So times 100 to get the percentage is 2.994%. Or 2.99. So that's how I would find the, how many people would fit between that. So roughly 3% of the male population will fit in their place like that. And because of that, most of them are gonna be female. That's just the way that works. Um, um, so if we change this, to be the only the 50% tallest men and the shortest 5% of men. Uh, so that what would our new thing be? So if we had, we want to restrict it from here. So Z, uh, let's do a new, let's save this and clear. Let's do undo. So instead of doing it based on numbers, we're going to do it to percentages. <clears throat> so we're going to do this based off of percentages.
So we want to do it from zero, from a 50%. 50% is right here. Right in the mirror, middle, our Z score. I could just save you it. Or 50% is zero. Just save you some time there. Um, and that, but in order to find the 5%, you had to go back to this wonderful table here. Uh, so you're trying to cut off from here. So this would be 5%. So you want to go from 5% or 0 0.05 to 50% or 0.5. So the z scores for that is zero once again. And then I just go in here and look for a 0 0.05. <clears throat> if you are on here and you're looking in your book, they tell you a 0 0.05, and you can also Google this, it pops up for Google. A z score for 5% equals negative, or it's positive and negative, either one, 1 1.645. So if you're looking for the top 5%, it's positive 1.645. If you're looking for the bottom 5%, it's negative 1.645. We want the bottom. So we're looking at a negative 1.645. So we could still do math to find this out. We just don't have the X value. For, that's what we're looking for. So we have the same thing, Z equals mu minus x over standard deviation. Put that up here. <clears throat> now, since z score for 50% is zero, that saves us some effort. So then we can just solve for the top to be equal to zero. So zero is equal to 69.2 minus x. So we can figure out that uh, essentially x is equal to 69.2. That's easy. Um, probably could have figured that out with just logic, and that's fine. The hard one is negative 1.645, because that's going to be equal to 69.2 <coughs> minus x over 3.3, because we care about that now. So from here, uh, we have to multiply both sides by 3.3 .3 to get rid of the fraction. So these guys cancel out. Uh, negative 1.645 times 3.3 .3 is 5 point, negative 5.4285. Negative 5.4285, which is equal to 69.2 minus x. So I subtract both from both sides, I subtract 69.2. This is a long number, and I don't know why. Is this getting bigger? Uh, so 69.2, or sorry, negative 5.4285 minus 69.2 is equal to, that's wrong. Why is that wrong? Am I, do, I have this backwards. Is it x minus mu? Sorry. I know this is wrong and it was bugging me the last step. I don't know why it's wrong. So I'm checking the formula again. If someone can see, see the reason why, please let me know. X minus X bar. Okay, I have this backwards. I'm sorry. So it's not mu minus X. It's X minus mu or X bar. So it's actually not 69 minus 2. It's X minus 69.2. There we go. 
So same thing here. Minus 69.2. Uh, 69.2, so that's going to be positive instead of negative. Um, so if you're doing things wrong, remember that you, if you're looking for the bottom percentage, your value is always going to shrink. So I'm not going to have something, I'm going to have something smaller than 69. Uh, in this case, whatever your height would be. So 69.2 minus 0.4285 would be 63. 0.7715 is my low end of my height. So that would be the minimum side, 63.8. And the maximum is 69.2. So that's how I find heights mathematically. Um, but once I remember how to do it, you can also look things up and do all this uh, based off of Excel. And it uses, um, I think it's norm, dis, uh, norm, norm dot s dot dis. So, uh, how do I get a z score? values so make sure i do this the correct way so we have the same values here uh, so if you do norm dot so we oh that's probability we don't have probability So we, you can use norm dist. So we have 57 degrees here, or, or height. Oh, let me share. Oop. Helps if I do that. So we have a function. So we can do the lower and upper. So we have norm dot dist. We can put in our x value. We can put in our mean and put in our standard deviation. And we usually want to do false because we want the probability mass function. So we know that is at 4%. Oh, that's supposed to be in the top, actually. Or is it? No, it's true. I'm sorry. It's not false. It's true. Or was it? Equals norm. This. We have 57, the mean, oh, I'm looking at the wrong one, standard deviation equals norm dot dist, our value, our mean, and our cumulative, our standard deviation, and So we still have the same things that we had before. We still have our upper and lower. Uh, so between, so we could take them, subtract them. <clears throat> it might've been false or rather true. No, oh, I think it was false. So the, what I'm looking at is we have something called a cumulative distribution function and a probability mass function. Um, so basically we're looking at specifically probabilities. So you need to make sure it's false, but it gives you the answer what you need looking for without having to do the wonderful math. Uh, you could also, so we have 50% look up basic values so 5%. For uh, based on percentages by using norm.m. So we have the same probability, 
so 0.5. So using norm.inv, you can put in your probability, which is 50%, so 0.5, our mean, 69.2, and our standard deviation, and it will return you your value. So same thing again, equals norm.m, so the inverse of your normal function. Your probability is 0 0.05, your mean, comma, your standard deviation, comma, gives you your answer. So norm.m gives you the value based on a percentage, and norm.dist will give you your percentage based off of your values. Um, be aware there's a couple different things in here. You can have norm.s.dist is if you're doing it from uh, standard normal distribution. The norm.dist is a normal distribution. <clears throat> you also have the norm.dist, which is from Excel 2007 and earlier. Um, normal commutative distribution function. Um, and you can also do the s this. So those are just old functions is all that is. So that's how you do these guys, um, both in uh, one value to the other or both, or for the uh, percentage back to the value. So I hope that helps with that. Uh, let me see what other homework type problems I can do real quick. Does anyone have a specific one before I go on to the next one? Oh, let's do one from the right side, specifically mathematically. So using the same problem, so I'm gonna undo, <coughs> move everything around. Let's say I wanna find out um, based on the same data here, how, what percentage of males are between, call 72 and 76 inches. So this one uses the right side table instead of the left side of the table. So you could use the same table. You just have to do a little bit of math. Um, so what I'm going to look up first, the easiest way to do this is to look up the bigger number. So look up bigger number first. You can do it this way. Um, or you, I mean, what essentially you're doing is I could do one minus everything, but essentially what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to look, uh, do that. I'm going to look. this way, and then I'm going to look this way. And when I subtract the two, what's gonna be left is this part right here. So I'm looking to find that little orange bit. That's the difference between the red and the yellow, uh, red and the blue. So that would let me, by without doing weird uh, subtractions, find the answer I'm gonna look for. So 76, so I'm gonna do the same thing. So the formula is Z is equal to X minus mu. Is that right? E minus X. Yes, that's right. Um, over standard deviation. So it's the same formula that we had. Uh, ideally, I do not want that color. What I wanna have is a value if I am greater than 69.2, where I'd be able to tell what my z-score is. Is it positive? Is it to the right of my mean? Uh, so we have the z of 76, which is equal to 76 minus 69.2, and all that is over 3.3. .3. So that is... 76 minus 69.2, 69.2 is 6.8. So 
divided by 3.3, which is 2.06 repeating, like that. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna go ahead and make it 2.06 because it goes to two digits on this. So if you wanna save yourself time, um, round Z score to two digits because that's what the table is. The only exempt only exemption is zero point zero five, which is one point six four five. And there's another one in here. Two point five seven five. Which is zero point. To zero five. So those are the two exemptions to the two digit rules because there's specific numbers that we use and someone's done the math because it's something that's used a lot. These numbers are used quite a bit. <clears throat> so that's our first one. And we can go ahead and look up the uh, 76. Uh, the probability of that is 2.06, let me look it up. Mm. 2.06 is 0 0.9803. 03. So that's the first number. <clears throat> Second one we're going to look at is the Z of 72. So that's equal to 72 minus 69.2, and all that's over 3.3. .3. So that is equal to 72 minus 69.2, 2.8 divided by 3.3, .3, which is oh, 2.8 divided by 3.3 .3 is point, 0 0.84 repeating, 8485 essentially for what we care about. So the Z of 72, the 72 is on the 80, 0 0.8023 percentile. So the 80th percentile. So what we do at that point is take Z of 76, minus Z of 72, which is 0 0.9803 minus 0 0.8023. So 0 0.9803 minus 0 0.8023. So 17, 0 0.178 or 17.8% of the male population is between 72 and 76. So that's six to six four, by the way. On Excel, it's the same basic thing. So we have 72, 76. Oh. On this, it will always turn the same basic thing between this. So you have to do one minus for everything. Wait, what's going on? Oh, that is it. So it is true, sorry. <clears throat> so I was wrong before. You do have to make sure it's true. When it's true, you should have the same values. And when you do this over here, say if I'm doing 50% to 
Actually, I can change this. 5.05. Sorry, I'm changing these to be done. So this is percentage uh, scores. So if we're doing the same thing here, why well, change it to 0.95? So I just want to make sure everyone who's above average gets it. I would get the same scores over here. So 74.62 to 69. So that's how I do basic percentages uh, to z-scores, z-scores to percentages, um, stuff like that. Uh, let me see if there's any other weird things in here. Mm. Probability, which we'll do those later. Uh, does anyone have a specific question they need help with? Oh, I could talk about this really quick. Uh, so normal distributions and QQ plots. So let me get this out, pop up. So on these, where are you guys at? There you guys are. New share. I'm actually going to share this at home real quick. So this is something called a QQ plot. So these are the down here on the bottom. Let me I have to get my uh, annotate, highlight, spotlight. That'll work. Oh, wait, I can do. So these right here are your actual values. What this is over here, it's either going to be residuals if it's in a model, or these are z-scores. So these are everything that you have. So what it's doing is it's plotting the value versus the z-score. <clears throat> and if these are normal distributed, so if you follow that curve like this, uh, these will be around your line here. Uh, what happens is, so if they're around the line, they're fine. If they start going off like this, the, the dots, or like this, far from it, and it could be on either way. So if, if they start deviating uh, here, or even like this, if it's like this, you will have a non-normal. So if it follows the line, it's normal. If it deviates, at the ends or the middle, it's gonna be a non-normal distribution. So it's just a way to do, instead of doing a bunch of math, it's a way to graphically visualize it using a computer program, which we don't even teach you how to use that sort of program. But that's beside the point. Um, let to see what else we have that I can talk about. Uh, let me see what other questions we have that work. I have lots of connection. Of course, I lost my connection. That's that's my life. Uh, so let me see. I'm going to keep on rambling unless somebody comes up with a question. Uh, so there's a couple of questions on normal distribution, just visualizing it. Oh, here's a good example. So here, here's a good example. And once again, I'm going off of the, the homework. <clears throat> here's a good example right here of one that is not following a normal distribution. So at the ends here, you have these guys here and these guys here that are kind of deviating from it. You also here, this kind of would concern me, but doesn't really at the same time. So this does not follow a normal distribution. Um, another question one is something like this. Um, so this is a little bit different. Um, but it still has the same basic error. Uh, this is 
uh, on something you deal with a lot of data that kind of has uh, called or it's ordinal data. So I'll have a lot of values that only meet specific criteria. So like if I'm doing a GPA for a class, I'm going to have, you know, one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, rather. So I'm not going to have 1.2. So this is, I could tell immediately this is, you know, that kind of data. But this group right here, I'm getting less than I expected. But this one right here is the one that really kind of concerns me because it's really far off because it's ideally it should be up here ish. Um, so this one I would have concerns about personally. Uh, other data types. Here's another one. I'm not, I'm not the same one. So the last one to look at, I mean, where's my annotate? There's my annotate. Is this one where I have it coming off on the south side here and on the east side here. So we have data that's kind of like falling off of the line. And whenever you have like kind of like an arc look like this, it's usually not going to be normal. So just stuff that you have to look out for. <clears throat> With that being said, um, we're about 50-ish minutes. So how are you guys' brains doing? Do you want me to keep on rambling? Or do you want me to wait till like Tuesday to talk about um, uh, the probability and any questions for the review? Uh, um, I, th let me see. That's a good question about the times. Um, I think I removed the time because I don't believe in timed tests. Um, let me check real quick. I did not mean to open that program. Uh, course settings. I remove the timer. So there is no time test because I absolutely hate it. I know I was always that one guy that got everything done in like 20 minutes. Uh, but I realize I'm not, you're not me. Uh, so why do that? So I made sure to make that your, um, your test has, and I will sit here, uh, seat in my butt, or butt my seat, uh, probably watching something on Netflix while you guys are taking the test. So I could be here as long as you need me to be. So if you want to take, and I'm not kidding, I think the worst one I did was uh, last year was three hours for a test. I will be here three hours for a test. So do not feel pressured. It's not like I'm going anywhere. Um, my wife will usually leave to work about an hour in. So I'm literally just going to be sitting here probably playing video games when you're done anyway. So use as much time as you want and do not feel guilty. Uh, so somebody said to keep on going. There is one more kind of question. Uh, let me look at it. I don't want, did I close it? I did close it. Arg. So let me, assignment manager, lead page. <clears throat> I think it was on proportions was the last little bit. And then I will let you guys go. Preview. Okay, so here's one. Um, this is using NP and NQ. Uh, so to do, to do, let me go ahead and snip it and see if I can put that on a whiteboard.
So the question I'm going to look at this time, uh, let me share screen whiteboard is, is it going to let me paste or no? So if, if MP is greater than or equal to five, and NQ is greater than or equal to five. Estimate P uh, at least eight. So uh, greater than eight with an N of 13 and P equals 0 0.5 using normal distribution. Uh, as an approximation on binomial. The binomial is if I flip a coin, I have very distinct answers. I have a, well, a yes or no answer. So on these, if my NP and NQ are less than five, we cannot use a normal distribution. But since we were going to assume that it's going to be greater than five, we will have normal uh, distribution. So the answer is not going to be B um, on this question. So we have a P values, which is 0 0.05. I'm oh, sorry, 0 0.5. So to, in order to do this, we have to do Q, which is one minus P. So one minus 0 0.5, which is 0 0.5. So that's the first thing we have to do. <clears throat> so NP is you take the number 13 times the 0.5, and then that gets you 6.5. And you do the same thing with NQ. So 13 times 0 0.5 is 6.5. So we have to figure out, essentially, do we meet the qualifications? So if those values are greater than five, greater than or equal to five, we're fine. If they're less, we cannot use a normal. Uh, so since NQ are greater than five, we can use normal distribution. So we got to do work. So we had to find the mean. Well, on this one, uh, mean from. to find the mean and the standard deviation of a proportion. And let me look up the formula real quick. Proportion. Um, 416. And they are all over the book with this stuff. Um, Where do they find the mean? Sorry, I'm looking real quick. One hypothesis testing is not it. This is not it at all. And I'm looking real quick to find this. This is the main point five. Of course, it's not giving me the answer. Uh, textbook. Let me get the textbook what specifically what section they want because I have no idea what they want.
Come on, Pearson. Oh, so our mean is going to be NP. And our standard deviation. Hey, guys. Hey, stop. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, ow. <laughs> Guys, one second. Stop it. Don't care. No. Let me pause my recording. So on this, we're looking at, um, so we found the mean, which is your NP. So that is actually 6.5. And your standard deviation is actually, doo -doo -doo, let me get the formula back up. 184, next page. The square root of NPQ. So we have square root of 13 times 0.5 times 0.5. So that is 13 times 0.5 times 0.5, three point square root of 3.25, which is equal to, to do, one point eight zero two eight so that is the basic information we have uh from here let me actually write out what i've done so find q let me uh check for assumptions over five or both uh find mean and standard deviation and then from here we do the z score so we take z is equal to x minus uh, x bar or, or mu over standard deviation so we take we put in z is equal to x which is eight we're looking to see if eight or greater, so if we find eight, everything greater than that is calculate, we can calculate. And then 6.5 is our mean, and then 1.8028 is our standard deviation. <clears throat> so eight minus 6.5 is 1.5. So 1.5 divided by 8028 minus or divided by 1.8028. So yeah, this is the hard one of the thing because of equals 0 0.83. So we're looking at Z scores, remember. So there's no point going past two digits. So a Z of 0 0.83 is going to be equal to, <coughs> so we're slightly more than normal. So we're gonna have eight, three being equal to 0.7967. So there are, we are at the almost 80 percentile of this. So we wanna know how many are greater than this. So to find out, We subtract this value from one. Because what we're doing is we have this right here. And here's our 6.5. And here's eight. 
And we found that eight is at basically about 80%. So this is 80%. So what's left this way is that 20%, more or less. So minus one, oh, I'm sorry, 0.7, oh, I'm sorry. One minus 0. 0.7967 is 20.33. So, Two zero three three, which is twenty point three three percent. So there's twenty ish percent uh, people on the right who uh, is the actual prompt on this. Um, that make this qualification. So, uh, like I said, that is probably the most annoying thing. The main thing you have to look out for on this question is. Essentially, this is how you find the P and Q, which we're going to cover later. <clears throat> this is how you find NP and NQ, and these parts right here, these formulas right here, rather, are sp very specific. And yeah, that being said, let me 